Uh, uh, oh my god. What was this pay per view? <sighs> what is up, YouTube? It's your boy D Walk 71, replace day with a four, and I am here with my WWE SummerSlam 2016 review. Oh my god, I am so out of energy. I'm so tired, and I'm pretty much upset about this whole entire pay-per-view. Whoever booked this pay-per-view needs to be deleted by Matt Hardy himself. Delete, 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 delete this pay-per-view because this pay-per-view was horrible. I do not recommend that anybody watches this from top to bottom. The I, I like I'm I'm hurt. I'm hurt. I'm I'm really hurt. I'm hurt because I'm a pro wrestling fan and as a fan that pays money, as a fan that pays ten dollars a month for the network, as a fan that pays money to go to wrestling events, as a fan that pays sixty dollars once a year for your game, as a fan that sits up here and and vouches for you when all other people doubt you. You let me down, WWE. You let me down. Oh, my. Like, I don't want to sound salty about it, but I'm just, I'm upset. I'm hurt because I'm really hurt. I don't know. I felt like WWE was going to step it up with this new era gimmick that they're doing, and they really let me down. Let me not waste any time with this uh, review. Let me get my notes out off my phone real quick because uh, I'm, I'm about to practically go in on this review. So we all have that. We got the pre-show matches. Nobody cares about the pre-show, but it, pre-show matches. But if you want to know what happened, Usos, America Alpha, Hype Bros versus the Vault Villains, the Ascension, and Breezango, the Faces won. It was a SmackDown tag match. They also announced that they're going to have exclusive SmackDown tag team titles and maybe women's title i don't remember next match we have the dudley boys versus Sami Zayn and neville um the uh, the faces won once again honestly how does Sami Zayn go from having match of the year with nakamura to being on the pre-show facing the dudleys <sighs> whatever uh then the next match which is actually supposed to be on the card and it's supposed to be the first out of a seven match series dear god cesaro versus sheamus I don't know if I was supposed to pay attention to this match or not. Oh my god, my phone's going off. Hold up. That's my fault. That's my fault. Um uh, I don't know if I was supposed to pay attention to this match. All I know is that Sheamus bro kick Cesaro and we're gonna get like four more matches after this probably. I uh oh, oh my god. So then we open up with a nice package promo. Another thing about SummerSlam, they had a new set. They don't have the generic set no more. They completely got rid of it. I thought that should have been a sign that SummerSlam is going to be lit tonight. Boy, was I wrong. So, we open up. You got to open up with the hometown heroes, right? So, we open up with Big Cass and Enzo Amore. You know they got to start off because they cut like 50-minute to an hour promos. Basically just talking, whatever. What I was surprised is that the Brooklyn fans actually knew Biggie. I mean, I know some of them did, but they knew the actual line from, um, what's the name of the song? Oh, my God. I forgot. Oh, I feel so stupid because I love hip-hop and I love rap. Oh. oh, my God. I forgot the name of the Biggie song. You know, it was all a dream. I used to read Word Up Magazine. That song, I <sighs> what was the name of the song? Like this, how much the pay? Like this, how much the pay per view sucks to me. I'm thinking, I'm. <sighs> What's the name of the song? What's the name of the Biggie song? Uh... Wow, I literally forgot the name of the Biggie song. But they, the fans chanted it, and then they started singing some other stuff. And then we had the match, Enzo More and Big Cass versus Team Jericho. Um. The match was cool, I guess. It was a great opener. I mean, Kevin Owens is amazing, of course. He, uh, at one point, did the running man on the apron, mocking into Amore. It was, it was, I literally was, like, dying because he was just so, it was just so funny to see Kevin Owens do something like that. I've never seen Kevin Owens do that before. He just did it like it was nothing. It was hilarious. Uh, the match in itself was, you know, a basic tag match, you know, uh, team Jericho won. 
with the shatter machine because you know how it goes. They carry one person, another person is a code breaker. Kevin Owens throws Enzo up, and uh, what's his face? Uh, Chris Jericho catches him with a code breaker. Boom, match over with. The hometown heroes lose. So then the next match we have, we had the first title match of the night. We had the women's championship match. We had Sasha Banks defending in her first title defense against Charlotte. In a match that was good, but bad at the same time. Now, the match was good because they did, you know, they did work. They did work. That that That's one of the main things I can say about this. They did work. But they also botched a lot, and I don't agree with the ending of this match and the results of it. All right, so the match was good. The was, we all know that Sasha and Charlotte can perform good matches when it's needed. Like, they don't, um, you know, they only perform good matches, like, when good matches are need to be performed. The first episode of Raw of the New Era performed a great match. Back at NXT, they performed great matches on the TakeOver specials. This is uh, a SummerSlam pay-per-view match, and they did great. You know, it was a lot of botches, and that's been one pattern about their matches is they've, I think that they're kind of nervous, you know, uh, shout out to Wiza for pointing this out to me, because I was half paying attention to this match, because I was, you know, leaving the hospital from visiting my grandmother, she's fine, by the way, all the way to coming back home, so, you know, I was looking at the street and looking, so I couldn't really pay attention to the botches, but shout out to the great prophet Muhammad Wiza for uh, pointing out to me that there were a lot of botches and stuff, and that they are basically, were kind of nervous a little bit, because, you know, they, this is their are around a lot of people and they're surrounded by everybody you know they got bigger stage bigger crowds this that and the other and also you also pointed out to me that Sasha needs to stop wrestling because if she does she's gonna die because we all know Sasha does those crazy stuff but it looks like she's gonna kill herself every single time it's crazy the uh match ended with um was it? Sasha Banks going for the bank statement. She, uh, Charlotte's about to tap out, and then um, they was about to do the little flip thing that uh, Sasha does, and then Charlotte transitioned into a pin. One, two, three. I was literally like, I was, I, I lost my mind. I was like, what, what, why? I thought we were about to push uh, Sasha for the championship. I thought we were about to push Sasha. Now we're about to sit up here and deal with another painful Charlotte Women's Championship reign that nobody cares about at this point. Oh, this is not even a women's division. This is the Divas division. I don't care what people say. This is the Divas division. There has been no change except for they got a new title and a new name. It's still the Divas division. They perform good matches, but that's only on certain occasions. I'm I'm really just like I'm I'm hurt. I'm hurt. I should have known from this point on that this pay per view was going to basically drain the energy out of me. So, um and from what I've heard, I think Sasha something's going on with Sasha because they're taking her off of live events and stuff. I don't know what's going on. And then she drops the title. So yay, let's sit up here and enjoy another useless Charlotte title reign and let's see how far this goes. Hashtag Divas Revolution. <sighs> oh my god. So then the next match we had, we had The Miz versus Apollo Crews. Honestly, who thought that this match was going to steal the show? Because it did not. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I'm going to talk about Maurice, the Marys. She was looking so fine tonight. Oh, my God. She she was clean tonight. You know, The Miz is The Miz. You know, uh, Apollo Crews, you know, he has no character. Uh, the match was nothing special, you know, um... I didn't expect much for this match, so I I really don't have no reaction. The Miz retained his title. I mean, do you really think Apollo Crews is going to win? He doesn't even have a character. He just smiles, but whatever. The next match we have, possibly match of the night. And in my opinion, I feel like if we continue to watch it, this could possibly be match of the year. We have the AJ Styles versus the John Cena. This match... Oh my god, this match was incredible. Oh my, th- this match was incredible. This this match blew my mind. It was great. Oh wow, th- this match was amazing. We have all kind of reversals. We have uh, big moves being used. We have WWE 
making me mad in that match too because nothing is perfect. We had seen a kick out of the Styles Clash and the way they used the Style Clash at the end was kind of messed up. I mean, come on now. Uh, th- this match was better than the Money in the Bank match. You know, I-, I was mad hyped for the first Money in the Bank match, but then once I watched it over, it really was underwhelming. It really wasn't as good as this match. This match was what their Money in the Bank match should have been, and they left it all out there because they know that this is their final match against each other because this feud is over with. I knew Styles was going to win because, uh, you know, I feel like Cena doesn't need to bury Styles, and Cena never loses at SummerSlam. If you watch my prediction video I did with the homie Zack Attack, I said that Styles is going to win. This does nothing to Cena, to be honest. I mean... After this match, we can still see Cena as a 15-time world champion. And he still sounds more credible than AJ Styles right now. So, I mean, whatever. Let's kind of analyze this match. Wow, like, if you still think that John Cena can't wrestle, you have mental issues. Cena can go. This man Cena hit the PD Williams. Is it called the Cole Reg? You know the move where he uh, has you up and he does like a freaking front flip and drops you on your head. If you don't think Cena can't wrestle, if if you truly think that Cena can't wrestle, then you are, like, stupid. Because Cena did moves, and he did work. Now, the only thing I have to say about Cena is maybe he didn't sell a little bit. But, I mean, that most people don't sell big moves. Ask Roman Reigns. He doesn't sell nothing. But styles did his thing we've seen styles do moves that i haven't seen him do in a while you know the phenomenal forearms we got a super aa from john cena and styles kicked out of it i was i I was like whoa after after cena hit the super aa i was like yeah styles definitely is gonna win because there's nothing else for cena to do and then we had transitions we've had styles go from a calf killer from cena transitioning into the stf and then from them just transitioning, reversal and everything, these guys left it all out in the ring. They performed incredible. We seen, I forgot the name of the move, Marinello called it. If you know what it is, it's what Ty Denzer does. Cena, I mean not Cena, Styles had Cena on his shoulders, flips him, and drops the knee on the back of the head. And, and JBL called it the AA. And I almost lost my mind because... JBL, if you don't know the move, don't say nothing. Just just nod and agree. He said he almost beat Cena with his own move. If that was Cena's finisher, I'm pretty sure nobody would boo Cena. Because that's an amazing move, by the way. Adam Cole does it, and it's it's a pretty nice move. But still, Cena kicked out of it. Cena kicked out of a Styles Clash. That kind of made me mad. But, I mean, WWE doesn't respect that move no more anyway. So, the ending was, uh you know, very... It was a clean ending. I just don't like how they did it. So basically, we have Cena just look at Styles with disbelief after he kicked out of the Super AA off of the second rope. I was so he's like so confused as to what it what is it going to take for me to kill this little bastard. That's basically what Cena was thinking. So he picks up AJ Styles again. Styles moves out of it, transitions into a Styles Clash. I thought he was going to pin him. No, goes for the phenomenal forearm, hits it, one, two, three, Styles wins. And I'm just like, why are they using the Styles Clash as a setup move now and not as a finisher? I'm I'm confused. I thought it would have been the other way around, a Styles Clash and two maybe a phenomenal forearm or something. I don't know, man. This was honestly the best match of the night. And then after, it got real emotional a little bit because, you know, Cena's my guy. He took off his never give up armband, put it in the middle of the ring, walked out to the stage. I think he threw his sign up. I don't remember. He looked back and he walked out. Now, Cena's not retiring, but he's about to be away for a couple of months because he has to go film um, his little reality fitness show he does on Fox, American Grip. So, um, uh, yeah, so that's what Cena's doing. AJ Styles has the W now. Can Styles carry this momentum to another feud? I don't know. Uh, congratulations to AJ Styles. So after that match, we have one club member, and we transition to two other club members in a WWE Tag Team Championship match. We have the New Day taking on Gallows and Anderson. Okay, so first of all, let me let's talk about this match. So WWE has basically been hyping up 
Jon Stewart to be on SummerSlam since Monday, I guess. He showed up tonight talking about Stephanie McMahon. The New Day comes out, and I believe Jon Stewart said he's going to be with the New Day since Biggie's gone because, you know, Biggie got hurt from, you know, something. I'm not like. Gallison basically took Biggie and just threw him where. <laughs> Where his nuts hit the ring, uh, ring post, and they counted that as like a major injury, so he was out. In this match, everyone thought that knew they were gonna lose. So this match was once again an average tag team match. I mean, it it was whatever. We had Doctor Gallows and Anderson. They came out with the lab coats on. They had the little jars, you know, of whatever pickle juice, whatever dirty water. Then they had each of them for each member of the New Day. Then um, Lou Gallows pulls out a real tiny one that has John Stewart's name on it, puts it right there. I don't know. So then we end up having the match. I mean, the match was okay. It was uh, decent. I mean, I I don't. I truly like. Now that I think about it, the match was only cool because of the John Stewart segment and then the return of Big E. Uh, also, the Kofi Kingston spot where he literally jumped off of the top rope, held a pose, held his nuts, stuck his tongue out like he was like Marshawn Lynch or something, and landed on one of the Gallerson people. Uh, the ending consisted of Jon Stewart getting involved. They were about to attack him. They are about to, you know, um, do the same move, the same thing they did to Big E, to Jon Stewart. And then Big E returns coming in running oh my god he ran so fast hits one of them uh disqualification uh gallison win by dq so we're probably gonna get another tag match at clash of the champions uh um uh after that you know they start celebrating biggie's gyrating john stewart tries to gyrate and then biggie gyrates and the crowd goes crazy uh yeah new day retains they have held the titles for 365 days a whole year so, shouts out to the New Day. Uh, the next match we have on here on this list, we have oh, the cool down match, which happened to be the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match. Oh, great job, WWE. Thanks for making, you know, your title, the uh, your most prized possession, the cool down match. Oh, my gosh. It seems like now Dean Ambrose is a cool down wrestler. You know, he's been hot when he won his title, but before that, you know, he was doing all kind of cool-down matches. And this is exactly what this match was. Now, honestly, since it was a cool-down match, I participated in it being a cool-down match, and I barely paid attention to this match. All I can say is, uh, um, I expected more from this match, I guess. I mean, the, I don't know. Like, they have, they had great, not, they had a great, like, promo package and build up for this match if i could say anything but the match was just so boring the crowd was dead the whole time the crowd was dead if that should tell you something about the match if the crowd's dead the match is dead the match never really picked up and never really you know took off or anything it was just a regular match you could probably see on raw smackdown um uh, the match can the match ended with dean ambrose um the match ended with Dean Ambrose hitting a dirty D's off of something stupid. I think Dolph Ziggler was trying to go for this little uh, face uh, buster. And Dean Ambrose decided to jump with Ziggler and then catch him in a dirty D's. Uh, I really don't know what to say about this match, to be honest. I Like, this is the WWE Championship match. And it's not even second, not even a co-main event or second to last. And this is WWE's most biggest prize this was their main event title until this brand split and if there's one thing about the brand split that i don't like is how they treat uh smackdown's world titles they don't treat them like their world titles even if it is the wwe championship but uh yeah the the um i'm pretty sure wwe is done pushing uh dolph ziggler um I don't know what's next for Ziggler. Dean, um, he's probably going to hopefully drop the title to Bray Wyatt at Backlash. I don't know. I'm pretty much half sleep doing this review because that's how much energy SummerSlam is taken out of me. The next match we've had, we had a six-woman SmackDown tag match, right? We have Naomi, so clean with her entrance, bro. I don't even know why I like her entrance. It's literally her just, you know dancing to dubstep i don't know i'm just into it maybe it's because naomi's clean but oh my god then we had carmella 
you know, and then we had the Becky Lynch versus Alexa Bliss and Natalia. And then we were supposed to have the Eva and Marie, the Eva Marie, <laughs> you know, and, you know, the whole thing about Eva Marie is she just got suspended, um, you know, for violating the wellness policy. I don't know if it's a work or not. People said when her music dropped that it was a work. And then the announcer was, you know, doing the little intro as he usually does. And then he announces that uh, Eva Marie will be taking a vacation from the fans because something, I forgot why, in like the British Islands or something. I don't know. So basically, they rid her off of TV for like 30 days saying she's on vacation because she got suspended. And that's why I think that the suspension is real because if it was a work, they could have brought her back. But anyway... In her place, which I knew this was going to happen because once I saw the news that she was cleared from uh, to return to the ring and I knew she was coming to SmackDown, Nikki Bella took her place. And honestly, this match was all right, I guess. Um, You know, it was pretty much your average six-woman tag match. Your average, no, six divas tag match, I forgot. They, they, they don't respect women's wrestling, so we're still calling them divas. The match was nice. Uh, Naomi had a moment where she went off. She did her little kicks, little head kick, did uh, a little um, um, springboard crossbody, which was nice. Uh, Nikki Bella actually did pretty decent tonight. Uh, she has a new finisher that's pretty clean. It's like a TKO where she uh, holds you in a fireman's position and then goes for an RKO. I thought she was going to go for an AA because, you know, she's smashing Cena, so, you know, take his move set because she can't do the rack attack no more because her neck but i mean shoot the match i mean what do you expect out of a six woman tag match that was also kind of a cool down match it was more of a cool down kind of get a little bit excited because we have another major match coming up soon right um the match uh it was meh the match was meh you know you had it it had his moments you know becky lynch went off uh, Natalia did her thing, I guess. Alexa Bliss, you know, everybody got some shine, but I mean, it, it really didn't like blow my mind. Uh, um, I guess welcome back Nikki Bella. She'll be on the SmackDown roster. Bring some, uh, bring a name to the SmackDown, uh, women's division. Cause you know, they don't really have, they have everybody on there, but I mean, Nikki Bella is Nikki Bella, but whatever, 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 whatever. So next match we have, we have, <sighs> This is where SummerSlam officially went downhill. This is where SummerSlam lost me. We have the W the first ever WWE Universal Championship match. Oh. Oh my god. Who designed this title? What? Who designed this title? WWE. Come on, bro. Y'all can't be this lazy. Now I gave y'all uh, I gave y'all uh, um a pass for the women's championship because you know the women's division is its own unique division so they need a title and that title works for them. But come on, bro. Y'all can't do this. Yeah, yeah. Come on, bro. Oh my god. I knew this was going to be all downhill when they announced that they was going to call it the Universal Championship. Come on, bro. Like what what, what was this? What? You you sat up here and hyped us up four weeks for this. And I'm not surprised, but I was hoping for the best because it was a rumor that the WWE World title and the WWE Universal title will look exactly the same, just different colors for each brand. They didn't do that, but what was... Oh, my... Like... Like, I'm going to put... Hopefully, if I'm not too tired of, like, editing... Actual editing, I'll put the title on the screen so you can see this abomination of a championship. What the? Oh, my God. What is this? Everybody in that arena booed the crap. Every time they saw that belt, they booed the championship. Whenever they showed it on camera, they booed it. When Stephanie McMahon and Mick Foley unveiled it, they booed it. WWE, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, like, like, why, why? This is gonna be your major championship, your major world championship. This, it's the same title as the world heavyweight championship. It's just a different color and probably material. What? The, oh my! God. Oh. 
oh, this is when SummerSlam, like, really, like, started to, like, anger me. So then we get into the match. Oh, my God. We get into the match. We have Seth Rollins come out with the with the uh, black and yellow, like he's Wiz Khalifa. Um, I thought that the Rollins Club was going to happen. Shouts out to Zack Attack because Gallerson was wearing black and yellow. Seth Rollins is wearing black and yellow. I thought something was going to happen. Then we have Finn Balor come out with the Demon King gimmick. It's the same guy he just has on face paint. He doesn't do nothing different. So then we have the match. I'm hurt. I'm hurt. I'm I'm hurt because the match was all right. You know, it wasn't the best. It was all right. I mean, it'll do. It's not better than Cena versus Styles by no means. It was a it was all right. It was all right. People loved this match kind of, but they hated that championship. The, if Roman Reigns didn't even get as many boos as that championship got. And this match was all right. You know, I was paying attention to it, but I was slowly falling asleep because I was I was slowly kind of falling asleep a little bit. A li- just just a little bit. And then they had the match. The match was fine. We saw Seth Rollins hit the God's Left Gift. If you've seen a Finn Balor match, then you've seen what he's done. He does drop kicks in the corners. He does kicks. He does um, single hook DDTs or whatever they want to call it in WWE. He does whatever. He He's literally the same guy just with face paint. And he has a whole entrance. <sighs> I'm so, um, WWE, what, what are you doing? What, what are you doing, man? Seth lost, bro. They they have Finn and Seth both kick out of finishers, basically making finishers not even look strong. And then Seth loses to Finn Balor. Oh my God, I've never been so angry before. What? And I'm not even saying this because I'm a Seth Rollins fan. I mean, I mess with Finn Balor. I have a couple of his t-shirts or whatever. But then I realized Finn Balor doesn't have a character. He's nothing more than just an Irish guy that has an accent and he used to do stuff in Japan. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. When Finn Balor won the title, I was never so hurt in my life. Finn Balor still needs work. He's only been on the main roster for about a month and you already gave him the major championship who booked this vince what oh my God. y'all didn't even do this to roman reigns y'all at least gave him two years before y'all decided to give him the belt and y'all gave finn the belt in a month what oh i'm <sighs> It's stuff like this is why I don't talk about wrestling in front of other people because I'm ashamed sometimes because of the stuff like this. You have Seth Rollins, somebody that's credible, somebody you could build. Seth Rollins is not perfect by any means. He doesn't have great mic skills, but Seth Rollins is a guy you can use and carry as a major championship to represent a company, not Finn Balor. Finn Balor just got in this company, bro. He just got on the main roster, bro. And now he's the world champion. Think about that. Think about that. Just think about it. Finn Balor's only been on the main roster for a month. And he's already the world champion of Raw. He doesn't even have a character. He's just a random Irish guy that wears face paint on pay-per-views. And he's not even scary, bro. Like, what? I... I don't even know what WWE is going to do after this. I And then after this, I realized we still got more stuff to go. And I'm hurt. I'm hurt. I'm really hurt. Then then after this, this is where I really just like not gave a crap about this pay-per-view anymore. So we have the Phil Bacon win. He's the universal champion. He's holding one of the worst design championships of all time. One of the most laziest designs. And then you gave it to him after he's only been on the main roster for a month. What the, what the, oh my God. 
Then we have Rusev versus Roman Reigns for the U.S. title. And I said if WWE messes this up, I'm practically done with this review. And what do they do? They don't even have the match. I mean, I'm happy because Rusev, you know, never lost his title. We know he's going to lose it soon. Like, he, like, oh, no, I don't want to. Th- no, never mind. Ret- I retract my statement. Rusev's never lose that title. I don't care what happens. So the match happens. I went to go get my charger, right? Because my phone was about to die. I went to go get my charger. And they were still doing the little video packages. And I guess they finished their entrance. And the whole time, these two are brawling outside fighting. These are the cold main event of SummerSlam, by the way. These two are brawling outside fighting. Roman Reigns is on top, right? Rusev is hurt. Roman Reigns comes back, spears Rusev, stands tall. What? You, I don't want to say that they buried Rusev because I feel like Rusev, at the end of the day, Rusev is still champion, and he's just making Roman look strong, I guess. Uh, I don't even want to talk about this. I'm, I'm, I'm hurt. I'm hurt. And then the main event... Oh, let oh bring that as here, boy. Bring oh, oh bring that as here, boy. Oh, this oh. <laughs> uh, this was the main event of SummerSlam, and this main event represents the pay per view as a whole. W- WTF? What 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 was this? What 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 was this? Got me stuttering because of how bad this was. We got Brock Lesnar versus Randy Orton in the main event of SummerSlam. A match that could be a classic because of the name value, the build-up for it, the video packages, then both invading other the uh, other's brands. Randy Orton coming on Raw to RKO Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar coming on SmackDown to F5 Randy Orton. It was just good setup. And then you have the match. This was worse than Cena versus uh, Brock Lesnar. I mean, at least with Cena and Lesnar, we actually got a a, a pin victory. Oh, this match started out. Brock Lesnar hit like a million suplexes. Then after that, he put Randy Orton through a table. Put Randy Orton back in the ring. Put Randy Orton back outside the ring. The referee didn't even count when he was outside. And then Randy Orton hits an RKO on Brock Lesnar. Then after he hits a RK on Brock Lesnar, goes back in the ring, right? He goes back in the ring. DDTs the Brock Lesnar, right? He DDTs Brock Lesnar. RKO's Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar kicks out. Brock Lesnar then no-sells it. F5s him. Randy Orton kicks out. Brock Lesnar takes off his gloves. Just starts wailing on Randy Orton. Randy Orton is bleeding. Pushes the referees off. Start beating up Randy Orton again. Randy Orton's bleeding some more. They end the match. Referees call it off. Brock Lesnar wins by TKO because why? This is the UFC, not the WWE. This was your main event, ladies and gentlemen. This was the match that's supposed to sell tickets. And all that happened. And literally everything I said was the whole entire match. That was the whole entire match. Oh. <sighs> The, the, this pay-per-view is giving me cancer, bro. This pay-per-view is giving me cancer. Oh, my God. What was this pay-per-view? What was this main event? This is the type of stuff that drives people away from watching wrestling. This pay-per-view right here. Vince man, you are the scum of the earth. I mean that from the bottom all the way to the top of my heart. I mean that. This is your main event, and you just let Brock Lesnar do whatever you want. He comes out here, he wrestles about four matches a night, and all he does is suplexes and F5 people and walks out, gets millions of dollars just to do that. Right? You end the match like that. I was so mad. I was almost asleep after this pay-per-view. Then after that, Brock Lesnar, F5, Shane McMahon, and they end the pay-per-view. WWE, what are you doing? What what are you doing, man? Come on, man. This pay-per-view was garbage, bro. This was these are four hours that I'ma never get back in my life. And I'm pretty upset about that. And if I include the pre-show, that's about another two hours. So I wasted about six hours of my life. That's almost about a that's a quarter of a day. I lost about a quarter of a day of my life to WWE to be disappointed and let down. Thank you, WWE. What what was this pay-per-view? 
This pay-per-view was trash. It was garbage. I do not recommend that you watch it if you haven't seen it already. The only match I recommend you seeing is AJ Styles versus John Cena. I'm not even going to rate this. This pay-per-view was trash. You know what to do, people. You know, you finally got me teeing up. You finally got me turning up because that's how much I care about wrestling and that's how much WWE does me like this. They they do me dirty, so now I'm about to just go in now. I'm, I'm truly just about to go in. Like, comment, favorite, subscribe. Do what you do to support me. Follow me on all of my social media links down below. Oh my god, this baby was trash. Um, watch the, the the last video. I don't I don't know what uh, what else you can do because I'm I'm really just so my mind's deboggled right now. It's in bits. Um, I don't know what else to say. Uh, P. Oh oh oh. I'm sorry. Peace. SummerSlam was garbage.